Hi, today I received a package. It is a very exciting package. It is something grandiose, something amazing, something transformative. Uh, who am I kidding? It's just a 3D printer. Namely, it's a Prusa Mini Plus. So, since this is my very first 3D printer I will have ever owned, and nearly the first one I have ever touched, I figured I would make this video to share my initial joys and qualms with this product. I will go over the packaging, which you can see right now, the assembly, ease of use, out of the box performance, and my own initial thoughts about the Prusa Mini Plus. Right, without a further ado, let's jump straight into it. Packaging. Since I got the printer as a DIY assembly, then the printer arrived, as one would guess, in very small bits indeed. However, I cannot say anything bad about the quality of the packaging. The package has an okay amount of padding, all the bits and bobs to make the printer are packaged in separate boxes and bags to make the assembly easier, and most importantly, no parts were missing. So yeah, in general, nothing bad to say about the packaging side of things. Apparently, at the time of my printer being packaged, Prusa had a shortage of their custom cardboard boxes and they even included an apology for not sending all the custom packaging they have. Not sure if that's really that important anyways, but there you go. Assembly. The printer can be bought as a mostly assembled or a do-it-yourself build kit. I chose the DIY kit partly because I need a warm-up to assembling complicated systems and for the fun of it, but mostly because it was just a fair bit cheaper. The Prusa Mini Plus, as a mostly assembled printer, clocks in at 419 euros. The green money's worth is on the screen. And only 379 euros for the assemble it yourself, you lazy <clears throat> Anyways, perhaps the higher cost of the printer is made up in ease of assembly? Well, the package comes with a manual book, however, it only contains the assembly instructions for the mostly assembled kit, and the instructions to assemble the DIY kit are only available online. The assembly instructions are spread out over a couple of chapters, and to motivate the fairly long build process, you're supposed to eat the Haribo gummy bears they provide as a reward after each chapter. Whoops. I know I certainly got my sugar rush well before I actually set out to build the printer. In any case, the instructions for assembling the printer start off very clearly and concise. Before each chapter, you are instructed to lay out all the parts you need for the chapter. The parts are all pre-packaged in separate bags, which makes finding all the bits really easy. So big thumbs up there. Instructions themselves are color-coded, so perhaps not the greatest for strongly colorblind people. However, I did not end up needing to use the color coding basically at all, as the written instructions themselves with the images are usually already enough to get you through the assembly process just fine. Having said that, while the assembly instructions are great at the start, then somewhere around the halfway mark they become a bit more cumbersome and slightly too packed, and as a result become more difficult to follow. In addition, there are a couple places with repeated words, typos, and perhaps slightly hard to follow English. Though these small oversights are an exception rather than a rule. And finally, a big, 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 big problem I had during assembly. Were nuts. Holy shit, Prusa, what are you doing? I know the instructions warned me that the nuts might be slightly difficult to see at times, but seriously? For a couple of them, it took me nothing less than literally sanding the sides of the nut for a couple minutes to make them fit. My hands were also rather painful by the end of the day from using all the allen keys to push the nuts into their correct positions. Like seriously, I understand the want and the need to have the nuts fit all nice and tight, but this is just ridiculous. Not only do these nearly impossible to seat nuts cause frustration, but they could potentially lead to damage to both the printer parts or the person assembling the printer due to use of excessive force. But in the end, I managed to get the printer assembled. And I must say, the end result looks nice and tidy, even after a klutz like me has assembled it. Ease of use and first prints. With the printer assembled, it was time to set up the firmware and to make the first print. I turned the printer on and it immediately prompted to do a self-test in order to check if there have been any critical assembly mistakes. The self-test checks all the axis movements, fans and heating elements. I guess I assembled the printer correctly because I got no problems reported. 
Next, I was prompted to calibrate the first layer height and start printing as soon as I get this damn filament into the extruder. Yana. Yeah, All I heard was a weird, slightly grindy noise and the extruder simply wouldn't catch onto the filament. I tried googling and skimming through the manual, however it didn't seem like a very common problem as I couldn't find anything that looked exactly like the issue I had at hand. However, I quickly did end up getting an idea as to what the issue might be. So I opened up the extruder and my initial hunch was indeed actually correct. Even though I had assembled the printer as per the instructions, I had to severely tune the leverage arm bearing thingy inside the extruder. The problem was that the filament wasn't able to enter the extruder because the possible gap between the extruder gear and support bearing was simply too tight. The fix was to tune it so that the support bearing was slightly more loose. Go figure. So if you should have problems with loading filament, perhaps try looking into this. After the slight tuning, the filament loaded in just fine and I could start printing. The first layer calibration and first prints were done with the PLA sample that gets included with the printer. Every Prusa Mini Plus print starts with the bed leveling procedure, as the print bed cannot be leveled manually. After which, the hot end heats up to final printing temperature and the printing can ensue. The silent stepper motors of the Mini Plus really are quite silent. The loudest part about the printer are the hot end and part fans. The Z-axis movement is also fairly loud, but fairly loud here means that you can only barely hear the printer from the next room over with the door open, and it certainly would not be a bother to work in the same room as the printer itself. Although I guess working in the same room as a working 3D printer should be kept to a minimum anyways. The first print I tried was a Benchy model which was included on the USB stick that came with the printer. The quality of the prints just out of the box are really quite impressive. Very little stringing, no problem with bridging, and overhangs of 60 degrees and even slightly above are no problem at all. Although at one point the quality does start to suffer, as is expected. If one looks closely, then slight surface artifacts can also be seen on layers where the print head would have been forced to move slightly differently in relation to the previous layer. Also, extremely small details are not going to come through perfectly, but that's probably due to the default 0.4mm nozzle. But overall, the quality of the prints did even go as far as to exceed my expectations. I also printed the frog, a nut and a bolt. Oh, and I may have run out of filament with this one. And then I tried out the Azure Blue Prusament and PLA I ordered with the printer to print the first things I myself modeled and sliced. I used the Prusa slicer as my slicer software, as is obviously recommended by Prusa themselves. But most slicers will have very good settings for the Mini Plus available out there. The model I made was a simple 5 to 1 planetary gearbox, and the result was surprisingly good, but of course I did leave quite large tolerances. Since then, I have also experimented with the precision and possible tolerances by printing, for example, this tight Kaleido cycle made by Ecoiras from Thingiverse. Link in the description. I also tried printing with Gembird PEDG, making this soda bottle adapter for possible future air pressure based projects. All in all, as far as my first impressions go, I'm very pleased with the Prusa Mini Plus, and can certainly recommend this as a printer for someone looking to get into 3D printing, but that doesn't want to have to know everything there is to know about 3D printing and 3D printers. The printer is extremely intuitive to use, makes good quality prints, is rather silent, and offers a wide variety of possibilities for FDM printing. In addition, the printer should be quite future-proof due to having a more capable control board. In the end, the final, completely subjective, completely out of my ass grade for the Prusa Mini Plus 3D printer, I'll have to go with a 4 out of 5. Thank you for watching and I hope this video was at least somewhat informative and perhaps encouraging in case you are thinking about getting a 3D printer and are considering the Prusa Mini Plus as an option. I hope you have a great day and until the next project, Stay safe out there.